This is a warning message and it goes to people that have been thinking on how to come over to the UK on a skilled worker's visa. Especially those of us that are in our various countries trying to sort for companies or agencies that will give us COS that we used to apply for visas to come over to work in the UK. After listening to this, I hope that we'll rethink and know if we are making the right decision for ourselves. Before I proceed, I would like to say that this is not a kind of immigration advice. If you need any immigration advice, you have to seek help from the right people. We have immigration lawyers that will do that for you. This is just realities of what has been happening around to people that I know, people around me, experiences so far that they have shared with me. Okay, so please do not misinterpret it. And it is not for the consumption of everybody. If you know you don't need this information, kindly skip it. Okay? There are some persons that this information is going to. Those people that have been sourcing or that have been looking for companies that will give them sponsorship, especially to come to work as a care assistant. You know, working as a care assistant in the UK is not something that you, you just wake up and you say you want to do just because you want to make money. Yes, the company will train you, they will give you the equipment that you need, they will give you the skills that you need and all that, but within yourself, you have to determine to know if actually you will have passion for the job, because you will not enjoy the job if it's not something that you have passion for. Because most times, you find that, that even in the course of the work, there are some things that are rather not said. So that is why you have to first of all determine to know if actually that is the type of work you want yourself to be doing. So before you end up trying to sell your property, sorting for money, trying to make all necessary arrangements for you to come over, first of all, you have to know the kind of work that you need to do. You have to read, do your research to know the duties of a carer, to know what you're expected to do when you get here. In as much as there are some good companies or good agencies that we genuinely want employees and therefore they will sort or they will ask you to come over from your country to come and work for them and everything is okay. When you get here, they will give you a job and all that. But others have been abusing this process, trying to make money from innocent people trying to make money from people that are trying to survive in their countries they are trying to take advantage of them making them to pay thousands of pounds all in the name of giving them job here in the uk and at the end of the day in some cases though not all but in most cases you find out that they will be so disappointed and frustrated because they will not have a place to even lay their head. They will not even have money to pay their bills. Because once they get to the UK, you find out that most of these companies does not even have job for them. Or does not even have enough shifts as promised. Okay, imagine someone that is on full skilled workers visa. And probably on your COS, it's been stated so, so, so and so amount to be paid that your annual salary is like £20,000, for instance. £20,000 divided by 12. You will find out that you have less than £2,000 as your monthly salary. Okay, this is your £2,000 that you're supposed to earn at the end of the month. From that £2,000, you will pay for accommodation, Accommodation, let's say £800 or £700 as the case may be. From this £2,000, you pay for your task. Yes, you have to pay for tasks. From this £2,000, you pay for your cancel tasks. Yes. 
from this two thousand pounds you pay for your ni some money will have to go in for your ni number then from this two thousand pounds you pay for insurance for this two thousand pounds you pay for pension from this two thousand pounds you pay for your bills your energy bills your gas bills your internet your telephone bills and some other expenses that you make at the end of the month you find out that even that less than two thousand pounds is not even enough for you to feed on or to spend for that month not to talk of trying to settle the debt that you already incurred okay so this first scenario is for people that even kept to their word it's for companies that told you that they will pay you twenty thousand pounds and at the end of the day they ended up paying you this same twenty thousand pounds or they ended up giving you jobs that will make you to end this this same twenty thousand pounds as they promised but what about some other companies that at the end of the day once you're here you can only go to work maybe once in a week they can only give you maybe like 10 hours shifts in a week yeah, they can even give you, sometimes you stay two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, one month, no work. There is no work for you. And if you don't work, you will not be paid. So that exactly is the reason why I am doing this video. Because so many people here today that came through this particular room, as I'm speaking with you, most of them do not even have where to lay their head. You know why? Because... Most of the most agencies do not really have shift. Most agencies do not have job because they depend on care homes to give them job. They depend on care homes to ask them to supply workers for them. So if these care homes does not ask them to supply workers for them, of course they will not have job. And if they don't have job, of course they cannot give you. You that you have spent 15,000, 10,000 pounds, 20,000 pounds to come over to the UK, they will not have job to give you. And of course, if they don't give you that job, they cannot pay you. And if they don't pay you, you won't be able to pay your bills. You won't be able to settle one or two things that you already gotten yourself into. Have you thought of it that what if these companies or these agencies finally loses their license? What happens to you? Of course, you already know that you cannot work for another company except the company that is giving you that sponsorship. It means that you will definitely go back to your country. So after you have spent much, after you have spent that thousands of pounds, thousands of pounds, yes, if you have free ones or you have the one that asks you not to pay, they want the new workers and all that, it is good. I am not against that. You can go for it. Of course, there are no other risk or there are just little risk attached to it. But I'm talking about the ones that you have to spend your money on. The ones that you have to pay thousands of pounds for. These care homes that these agencies depend on, most of them recruit directly for themselves. Most of them sought for employees even from here in the UK, most of them already have enough employees. So they don't depend on agencies anymore. Most of them, not all. I am not saying that there is no work. Of course, some agencies are still working. But I'm just telling you the realities like what is happening. Please, my brothers, please, my sisters, please, let's be careful. As you are coming, please think very well. Think of it. Think very well if it is actually worth it. I am not saying this to discourage anybody. I am not saying this because I'm already here. I don't want people to come. No. Of course, if anybody comes here, I have nothing to lose. Okay. But I am saying this because I'm trying to watch my people's back. I don't want people to fall victim. Okay. I want everybody, if you are right there in your country, you will do well. If you are here, you are happy, you are doing well here. That is exactly what I want. Okay, my guys. So that is it. Thank you so much for listening. And I pray that God should give us the grace to take the right decision that will not affect our now or our tomorrow. Thank you guys. And please do not forget to share. Bye.